video I am going to talk about what is cross validation and what are the types of cross violations you can use while building machine learning models. So first I will talk about what is cross validation and then we will go into uh, the details of the types of cross violations and we will discuss four types of cross validations. So what is cross validation? Just that you want to validate your model that it's going to work perfectly in future or not. Okay. So when you build model in historical data, so you build model in historical data, right? So the data that we have already seen, but the model is going to be used in future data. So the data that we haven't seen yet. So in order to uh, ensure that it works there, we need to hypothetically create, uh, let's say, a historical data, a future data out of the historical data. So we need to hypothetically create future data um, from the historical data. So if you have historical data, so we just divide and we build model assuming this is only the historical data and we do not show the model or we do not use the second portion of the data, this portion of the data to the model or to the algorithm and we consider or we at least, we at least uh, you know, assume that this data, the second portion of the data, which is not being used in model building, is uh, going to be very similar to the future data. And if the model works good there, then the model is expected to do well in future as well. So that's the idea. I mean, the idea is just to you know ensure that the model works well in a new data set, completely new data set, right? It need not be the same data set. It could be a data from different time period also. That could also be the case. But it's just that you, it has to be an out of sample or out time or out time. That means different time or different sample. Okay. Um, so it helps selecting the best fit model. The best model that we choose has to be well validated. It also helps ensuring that uh, the model is not overfit. That means the model is working very fine with the historical data or the training data in technical sense when we call it as training data whereas it doesn't perform well in the data on which we validate it right if that is the case then this is a typical case of overfitting so to avoid all these things we need to uh, do the cross validation and there are many ways of doing cross validation four most important ways are the following and i'm going to discuss these four ways one way is the the whole out uh, method the second one is the k-fold cross validation. The third one is the leave one out cross validation, and the fourth one is the bootstrap method. Okay, I'll go one by one. The first one is very popular, and I'm sure if you have ever built a model, you must already be uh, knowing this one. Just that you may not be knowing the name of it, but it's it's, it's probably the trivial one. So what do you do? You divide your sample into two different samples. One is training sample and the second one is test sample or holdout sample. Okay. You build a model in the training sample. So the training sample could you know, possibly have 50 to 60 or 70 percent of the data and your holdout sample could be having you know, 30 to let's say 50 percent of the data. Okay. And there is no overlap. That means an observation that is part of the training sample is not part of your holdout sample. Right, so so the observations are mutually exclusive. That means there is no common observations these, between these two samples. Okay, so you build a model in training data training sample, and you see how it performs in the holdout sample. Okay, so if it performs well and it's consistent, the performance is consistent across training and holdout sample. We say that the model is good and it it. it it's well validated it, it's uh, it's a good model for future so that's holdout method but it has some you know issues the issue is with this sort of validation technique is that well it all depends on how we choose the training sample well we have just taken the left hand portion of the data a training sample okay so if we just for imagine we take this portion as the training sample Whereas this one would be our holdout sample. In that case, the model might perform, a model might behave differently. So, 
the 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 one thing that's lacking here is that uh, it all depends how you choose your training and hold out sample so it might be the case that you know the the for a given um for, for a given uh, model if you keep on changing uh, the training and hold out sample from the same you know main sample the performance could vary and that's an issue right so that issue can be eradicated by using what is known as k fold cross validation so so the main issue that we faced uh, in the previous one is that uh, we just have you know one training and one holdout sample right one training and one holdout sample so depending on how you choose the training and holdout you you know you uh, get the performance and that could vary if you keep on changing the training sample and the holdout sample. Now in k fold we divide the entire sample into k different subsamples and k could be 5 to 10 so there could be 5 samples or 10 samples. Now what we will do is that <coughs> we'll have several training data sets okay so we have just you know divided the sample into 5 subsamples so we have you know one two three four and five okay now we have used four the fourth subsample as the validation of holdout sample and the other four ones other four samples as the training sample so we will build model using the four subsample the first second third and fifth and test the model on the fourth subsample so that's the validation one. Now we keep we keep changing the post. Okay. So now we will keep this. We'll make this one as validation or holdout sample rather. Okay. But this one we'll make it as training. So now we'll build the model on first, second, third, and fourth model, and we will use fifth sample sub sample as holdout sample and test our model. And we keep on doing that, right? Now the good thing with such a cross validation is that each portion of the sample is now part of uh, training data as well as holdout data. So all the subsamples will be training as well as validation, right? We we'll keep on changing, but there'll be five iterations. However, each data point will be part of both training and out so there is less likely to be selection bias right how we select our training and test sample like the previous one where you know our selection of training and holdout sample used to bring this issue uh, of you know performance issue because of uh, you know changes in the selection but here that problem won't be there now so the advantage is that it um, so it matters less how the data gets divided okay it doesn't matter how you divide data so if i have a sample you're not sure whether this much you will take training and the rest you will take hold out so how can you decide you know this much is just training you know so that selection bias or selection the decision about how to take training is now immaterial it doesn't matter in a k-hole selection so selection bias is the main advantage just to remember so leave one out cross validation, the third type of cross validation. Now this is more of a you know uh, a generalization, generalized case of uh, a k for cross validation. Instead of just taking k equal to five to ten, okay, these are small numbers, right? In like in a sample of million observations, if you just have five to ten, you know such samples, uh, sub samples, then uh, it can well be scaled up to more number of subsamples, right? And the most general case is that we'll take each observation to be a small uh, subsample. Okay, so if I let's say hundred observation in your main sample, then we'll divide the data into hundred different parts. Okay, and then the rest of the observations, okay, will build model. Uh, on rest of the observations except only the last observation okay 
and that observation will con consider as validation sample and then we will calculate error this will be error one okay now we'll change the post we'll make it training and we'll make this one validation or holdout okay and then we will again calculate error error two and we'll keep on doing that okay so you'll have error one error two error three and so on so the average error will be simply the summation of you know errors you know you can actually square it just to get a mean square error um, so the average error is going to tell us what is the accuracy rate and what is the expected error rate in the future okay and one thing you might be wondering that isn't it very difficult to do imagine you have million observations or you have maybe even hundred thousand observations so you'll have to do the hundred thousand times iteration you have to build hundred thousand models and do validation for hundred thousand times it's very difficult right so it's very computational intensive so high computation time is there but it's, it's one of the best way to validate because each observation is now part of training and test data second important thing is that now you have more data for training right when you divide when you divide just by 5 to 10 times so you have less data for you know training your model right whereas here you have more data because you just have one observation to hold out right rest all observations is part of training right so it it combines the best thing about your previous cross validations right it, you get the best of both worlds but the problem is computation time but now we have you know massive parallel computing many cloud providers are now providing us uh, computing per hour at a very cheap rate right whether it's amazon whether it's google whether it's microsoft whether it's apple right you can just train your model with their cpu and gpus and they have few with a very uh, low cost but on your computer that's going to take you know for hours maybe days or months last one i am going to discuss is the bootstrap method now this is slightly different from the other ones okay um so there are few steps involved here given that it's slightly different from the other ones i'll i'll try to explain what the steps are okay so you randomly draw data sets from a training sample and each sample has same size as the training sample and then you refit the model and then you examine the model four different steps you randomly draw samples make sure that the sample size is exactly same as the main sample now that's a tricky point you might be wondering why do we have to you know get the same size sample and how is that possible if, if that's possible then why are we doing it for the first at the first place well i'll explain then we refit the model and then we examine the model by taking the error rate okay let's explain let's me, let me explain you by taking an example so we have this sample s it has which has got n observations now we take sub samples okay from it with exactly n number of observations and ensure and you know take as many as you possible okay let's say uh, we took 100 such samples now we have n observations now when we have n observations in the sub samples we need not have all the observations present in the main sample be in our sub samples because we are taking some uh, observation with replacement that means if a sample one if a data point one let's say data point one data point two we have such data point right? n data points so if data point one has been selected once it can well be selected twice okay because it's with replacement okay so there will be many duplicate data points in a sample okay so even though we have n observations in our subsample it it is not exactly the same as the main sample okay similarly in the second sample you will get you know data points with replacement that means every time you select a data point there is equal probability of each data point being selected right now that said the sub samples will be completely different most of the times than the main sample and then you build your model in each of these you know sub samples if you have 100 you have selected 100 sub samples from the main sample by you know uh, selecting random uh, observations with replacement 
then you will have 100 different models, right? 100 different models. Now we have now one thing to remember is that we have not divided the sample into training and test as such the way we used to do in the last three types. And that's the uh, main difference between bootstrap method from what we have learned in other three. Okay. Uh, so what we do essentially here is that we, instead of having separate holdout sample, we just consider that the random selection of um, you know observation in each subsample make it very unique. So every subsample is unique its own in, in its own way. And you, when you take the average of your with, the, with your error, then that will be very close to what it otherwise would have when you would have taken the uh, holdout sample. So that error will be taken as the prediction error, or that error will be considered as the expected prediction error. So you don't have to, uh, you know, use validator model separately. That itself is considered as considered as validation, right? Okay. Graphically, we'll try to understand. Okay. So um, so we have, you know, the main training sample. Let's say we have five subsamples. No, n number of subsamples. And then we have, let's say, B1 subsample having n observations. The initial main sample has got n observations. So each subsample has got n observations. Okay. Now, when you build model in each one of the subsample B1, B2, B3, to Bn, you will get error like E1, E2, E3, and En. When you average the error, that is the test error or holdout sample error. Or rather, we call it as expected prediction error. Right? Now you might wonder, we don't get such expected prediction error from training sample. Right? We do get that from holdout sample. But in this case, given the randomness or given the fact that we have taken unique samples by choosing data points uh, randomly, you don't have to separately validate it. The error rate from these training samples, the n number of training samples, will itself be counted as the, um, the expected prediction error. So these are the most important uh, cross validation techniques that uh, that that's used in the industry and in academics. There are also obviously many other ways in which validations can be done. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe. And we are going to upload many more videos on machine learning, data science, analytics, statistics, and, and mathematics. Thank you so much.